Hello everyone, welcome back. I am Gaming Quid, the most delicious Quid of them all. It's crazy. There's another Galat Regalia happening already. And it's featuring the new summer units. It's crazy. Like, I just woke up, I saw the news and was like, what? Already another Galat Regalia? Um, let's talk about it. Uh, it's, 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 it's bonkers. Like, it's really cool because the summer units will be on another summon showcase as well but we will have a higher chance of getting them thanks to it being a gala gala tragalia it's crazy and it's not a normal gala tragalia though it's a gala tragalia remix which means there are no new gala units in this and they are will be older units on focus apparently um we you you'll see what i mean Let's talk about the meat of this banner. It's, for me, it's Pathia. I haven't actually looked at her skills yet because her, her her outfit is just so cute. Why should I care about the skills? I need her. And one very important thing about her, um, it's written down, uh, it's written down below. She, she does not have an English voice yet um, because of COVID-19. She has a Japanese voice. So if you're playing in Japanese, this doesn't really matter for you, but English be English English speaking players will have to wait a little bit longer until she can be added. Uh, until her voice can be added. So let's take a look. The vice captain of the Vi White Sparrows in new beach attire, the great leg strength she's cultivated through her work lets her race across white sandy beaches at top speed. So look out because she's charging into summer at full speed. Yeah, I'm not gonna talk about great leg strength because yes, I want her to grow. Okay, let's take a look at Sparrow Splash. It's her skill one. She's a a, a shadow axe. She deals shadow damage to target and nearby enemies and reduces their defense by 5% for 10 seconds. And her second skill deals shadow damage to enemies in a line and inflicts poison. So kinda... So kind of like, um, what's what's her name? Dragon Yule Melora with her S1. And was it her S2 did? Oh, I can't remember. But she doesn't seem too crazy. Like, her kit is pretty standard. It's, it's, it's defense, debuff, and is she inflicts poison. There's not much else to say about this. So let's take a look at her core ability. It's sadly a defense plus 15 core ability. I kind of hope for having another alt X, limited X with um, what's it called critical chance up, like Valentine's Melody and Halloween Mim. Her chain core ability is really good for characters like Veronica because if a team member is attuned to Shadow, it increases their strength by 15% when they're HP is 40% or below. That's pretty cool. And her abilities are what give her some uni uh, unique feeling. Her Sparrow Spiker 2 ability increases defense by 5% and grants the user a un unique force strike that has three increasingly powerful charge levels. Movement is possible while charging. See, that's pretty cool because they planned that we will be able to do that in general and they're starting to add it with Pathia. Using Sparrow's Splash grants the user the Seaside Spirit effect. When this effect is active, the user's next force strike will inflict poison. This effect cannot stack and it will be consumed on use. So this is interesting, but 5% doesn't seem like much to be honest, but I guess that's okay. I'm really interested to see what it looks like because like Linea, for example, has a really, really cool force strike animation. And yeah, she, she, she also inflicts poison. So she's going to be probably a good poison, infl uh, poison inflicting unit. She is paralysis resistant and she has poison edge and anti-poison strength 2. Increases the chance of inflicting poison by 60% when the user's HP is 50 or above and increases the user's strength by 15% for 10 seconds every time the user tries to inflict poison on a foe and the affliction is resisted. After activating, this ability will not activate again for 5 seconds. So if I understand this correctly, if you fail to inflict poison, she 
get stronger. It's not like with Gala Alex that when she inflicts poison she gets stronger by 30% I think. So this is pretty cool because she will get stronger the longer the fight is and we don't know how Cayenne will turn out. Maybe it will be extremely long. Like for Master Volk for example, it's not really optimal to run a burn punisher setup because the fight goes on too long. Okay, maybe not anymore, but at the beginning it was like that. So maybe it's the same with, with Master Cayenne. The fight is a little bit longer, so it's not really optimal to run a poison comp. We'll have to see. So in general, her kit isn't that special or anything, but she's cute, so that's that's, that's more than enough for me to, to summon for her, especially since this is going to be a 6% chance to get her. I mean, or to get a 5-star and yeah, you know what I mean. Let's take a look at Mikoto. He is, as we all already guessed, a light bow. Mikoto has found a slick swimsuit that helps him surf the waves. He continues to search for his beloved cat Miniuchi, a journey that takes him to a beach set to have wave riding felines. He's also taken up a bow to land fish for cat friends. Okay, that explains why he's using a bow. So, did he, okay, here it looks kind of better. Not completely out of place that his head is tilted, but I'm I'm still not 100% sure about this. It looks good, but kind of weird. His first skill is Radiant Bolt. It deals light damage to the target and nearby enemies and inflicts paralysis. When the user has the illuminating sunlight and celestial wave light effects, the sun and Z ability will make this skill deal more damage and deal extra damage to paralyzed foes. I have no idea what this means yet. His second skill is Magnamager's Call. Yep, I totally, I, I did to totally <laughs> said that correct. Increases the user's strength by 20% for 30 seconds. When the user has the illuminating sunlight and celestial wave light effect, the sun and sea ability will make this skill also increase the user's critical rate by 20% for 30 seconds and add 15% to the modifier applied to critical damage for 30 seconds. Jesus, this is nuts. Like, for 20 seconds, uh, 30 seconds, for a strength increase by 20% for 30 seconds is already pretty good, but also increasing critical rate and the damage you do? Phew. So I guess it's going to explain down below what all of this means, hopefully. His chain coil ability nah, isn't that interesting. Um, skill haste, uh, just as a bow unit usually has. So the ability, it's, phew, it's long. Let me take a deep breath. <sighs> Increases defense by 5%. Grants the user a unique force strike and grants the user the sunlight effect for 12 seconds at the start of the quest. Using a force strike while the user has the sunlight effect grants the user the illuminating sunlight effect, which will not stack. After the sunlight effect ends, the user will be granted a wave light effect for 12 seconds. Using a force strike while the user has the wave light effect grants the user the celestial wave light effect, Jesus, which will not stack. After the wave light effect ends, the user will be granted a sunlight effect for 12 seconds again. So it's just... It's just... Sw switching every time you use a force strike? So yeah, it's, it's, it's... For 12 seconds you have the sunlight effect, then you have the wave light effect. When you use a force strike, you get the illuminating version of that. If the user has both effects, the Radiant Bolt and Magnemity's Calls skills will be powered up. Using either power up skills will consume both. Okay, so that means for 12 seconds at the beginning of, this, of the quest, you will have the sunlight effect. You need to use a force strike in that time, so you have the illuminating sunlight effect um, temporarily until you you also have the wave light effect, which stacks, which does not stack. So then you have both, and then you can use these to increase your buffs or your attack. So that's how I understand it. Which means that it takes at least 13 or 15 se 13, I said 12 seconds. After 12 seconds, you can use the F4 strike again for the other effect. And then you are powered up. Oh geez, this is complicated. Probably not as complicated as it sounds, but it's interesting that he has a bit more going on in his kit. He is a curse rest, so um, unit, so you can't really take him to High Jupiter, 
and paralyzed oh, no, not high Jupiter um that's stupid yeah he, he's not a shadow unit of course you can't take him to shed to high Jupiter curse rise okay you can take him to high solar all right um, Paralyzed Shredder increases critical rate by 20% and adds 15% to the modifier applied to critical damage against paralyzed enemies. So basically, rip in pieces, Zodiac. Um, super interesting kit, I gotta say. Um, I really hope I pick him, up, pick him up. I'm not sure if I will actually chase him if I get Petya first, but nah, we'll have to see. So there are two other units, maybe on focus, if I understand this correctly. It's Gala Cleo and Gala Mars. If you've been playing for some time, you know both of these units are very, 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 very good. And we'll have to wait until tomorrow if they are actually on raid up. Because if they're not, you don't really have any reason to chase them because it's going to be difficult. But if they are... I may actually end up pulling a bit more because I still don't have Gala Cleo and I really really want her. So to wrap this up we are going to take a look at the trailer of this new Gala Tregalia remix. Please keep in mind that Pathia does not have a voice actress yet. I mean not, not she does have a voice actress but she couldn't record. Her art is really really cute. I'm happy I already have a um, Max Unbound Akito x for her so please come home and yes wait for any archer yeah sure i just <laughs> surfing and using a bow at the same time seems a bit difficult but i guess mikoto can make it happen and apparently if i saw this correctly his bow changes when he attacks like it's it, it's his typical color scheme does it the same for pathia Let's take a look. No, her, her axe doesn't change. But interesting that his weapon changes. Seems like he got a bit more work than Pethia. Does it talk about... No, it doesn't talk about anything else. Alright. So, that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Tell me in the comments below if you are going to summon. And if you are, how hard will you go? And for which unit are you going to summon? See you in the next video, please subscribe to me, I will definitely make a summoning video on this banner. And bye!